Their eyes were watching God. By Zora Neale Hurston. In this video, we will discuss a summary of Chapter 10, followed by an analysis of the chapter. Chapter 10 Summary One day, Hezekiah leaves the store early to go to a baseball game. Janie decides to close up early, since most of the town is at the game. But before she can do so, a tall stranger enters the store. He buys cigarettes from her and then begins making flirtatious small talk, making her laugh with his jokes. He's charming and claims to have come to the wrong town looking for the ball game. He invites her to play checkers. No man has ever invited her to play before. Since she doesn't know how to play, he teaches her, and she's delighted that a man thinks it natural for a woman to play as his equal. She notices his good looks and shapely body. He's everything a girl could want, tall, dark, handsome, not misogynistic, and so different from her old, fat, dominating husbands. Janie and the stranger play a good-natured game and continue their flirtation. They joke around for the whole evening, and we learn that this man has a high opinion of women, saying they can do the same things as men, play checkers, walk far, ride a train. Afterward, they chat some more and Janie asks him how he plans to get home. He answers that he always finds a way home, even if that requires sneaking onto a train illegally. She finally asks his name, and he replies that it is Virgible Woods but that everyone calls him Tea Cake. He pretends to leave but makes Janie laugh with a playful, imaginative joke, and he stays around. They continue to joke and laugh until the store fills with people returning from the game, and they talk until everyone goes home for the night. Though Janie is cautious, she finds herself very comfortable around him, as if she has known him her whole life. He helps her lock up the store, walks her to her porch, and chastely bids her good night. Chapter 10 Analysis The unnamed man, soon revealed to be tea cake, enters Janie's life when she is caught off guard and engaged in her day-to-day -day life. It is tea cake's acceptance of Janie's true self that marks him as different than Logan and Jody. T. Cake's invitation to Janie to play checkers in particular shows how he treats Janie as an equal. That said, checkers speaks not only to the playful aspect of Janie and T. Cake's dynamic, but also to its role as a game, a realm in which there are rules that can not only be taught, but bent in order to cheat. This doubly playful and dangerous dynamic defines Janie's eventual relationship with T. Cake. Janie and T. Cake's conversation unfolds organically and playfully, indicating a shift in the way that Janie's attraction works. Namely, she is intrigued by T. Cake's sweetness and his ability to treat her as an equal player in conversation, not as someone with horizon. Janie's initial feelings of nervousness about T. Cake are eventually validated by his often overly playful behavior, even if well-intentioned. Nevertheless, Janie is overwhelmed by how comfortable she feels talking to T. Cake, as with him she can express herself. Talking to tea cake quenches Janie's thirst for a voice and a sense of individuality the way the moon quenches the thirst of the day. Chapters 9 and 10 mark the beginning of Janie's liberation. First, she learns how to be alone. Then, tea cake's arrival brings her to a second stage in her development, as she begins to see what kind of relationship she wants and how it will help her attain her dreams. Throughout Chapter 9, Janie brims with independence and strength. We see her with her hair down, the symbol of her potency free and unfettered. Additionally, this chapter is full of Janie's voice. Unlike the previous chapters, in which Jody forcibly keeps her silent, Janie is now full of conversation. She talks to Ike Green, Hezekiah, and Phoebe, all the while asserting her own desires. As Janie enjoys her newfound freedom of speech, she becomes more introspective and self-aware. In previous chapters, Janie distances herself from her emotions in order to survive with Jody. Now, however, she confronts feelings that have lain dormant for almost two decades. She realizes, somewhat to our surprise, that she hates her grandmother for raising her according to a flawed belief system that values materialism and social status. Janie understands that while people are what matter to her, she had been raised to value things. Nevertheless, she has a mature enough understanding of life not to blame Nanny, she understands that Nanny impressed these values upon her out of love. As with Jody, evil is localized not so much in a person as in a broader set of beliefs. Nanny is not really a villain, she is merely misguided by a flawed way of looking at the world. With tea cake, 
an entirely new worldview enters the story. T. Kate clearly respects Janie for who she is and wants to engage her in a substantive manner. He converses with her and plays checkers with her, both activities that grant equal status to the participants. The substantial space that Hurston devotes to their conversation contrasts with Janie's first meeting with Jody in Chapter 4, when he charms and overwhelms her with his smooth talking. Foreshadowing the lack of meaningful contact to come in their relationship, Janie's first conversation with Jody is brief. Their subsequent flirtations are not presented directly but instead glossed over by the narration, every day after that they managed to talk. When T. Cake and Janie first meet, on the other hand, they fill several pages with real dialogue, hinting at the potential richness of their relationship. Furthermore, T. Cake exhibits a creativity that is immensely appealing to Janie. He makes her laugh with fanciful, imaginative jokes, pretending to hide behind imaginary lampposts, talking to invisible companions, making puns and creative wordplays. T. Cake's show of creativity contrasts with Jody's penchant for consumption. Whereas Jody lives to consume and has materialistic goals involving power and status that he displays with objects like fancy spittoons, T. Cake, as his creativity demonstrates, is concerned with things beyond material life. By this point in the novel, Janie has realized that her quest for the horizon involves a pursuit of the mystical and unknowable mysteries that Jody's materialistic worldview could never approach. Through his respect for her and his vibrancy, T. Cake seems to Janie the man who will compliment her and take her toward the horizon for which she longs. If this video helped you, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe for more helpful content.